Welcome to Spiritism Explored and Explained, where we take you on a journey of discovery of the other side, the spirit realm, the universe from which you came and shall return. Dreams. Dreams are an escape from our physical body into the spirit realm. Published in English in 2015 by the United States Spiritist Council, there is a dissertation from an unknown spirit about sleep. It supplies a complete survey of what sleep means to souls at different levels and why our dormant state is vital for us. This is what he says. Poor human beings, how little you know about the most ordinary phenomena that exist in your life. You think highly of yourselves. You think that you have a vast knowledge and remain speechless before these simple questions framed by all children. What do we do when we are asleep? What is the meaning of dreams? I don't have the pretension of making you understand what I want to explain, since there are things that your spirit cannot submit to, because one can only admit what one can comprehend. Sleep entirely frees the soul from the body. When we are asleep, we are momentarily in the same state that we shall definitely be after death. The spirits that have quickly detached from matter on the occasion of their death had intelligent dreams. Those, when sleeping, met again with a society of other beings that are superior to them that travel, talk to them, and are enlightened by them. They even work on tasks that they finalize when they die. This, once more, must teach us that we should not fear death as we die every day, as once stated by a saint. All this was said with respect to the superior spirits. The large majority of people, however, who may remain in that perturbation for long hours, in that uncertainty that you were told about, those individuals goes to worlds that are inferior to earth, attracted by old affections, are to look for pleasures that are even of a lower level than those found here. They will then learn doctrines that are even more vile, ignoble, and harmful than those they profess among you. What establishes the sympathy on earth is nothing else but the fact that we feel attracted by the heart. As we wake up to those with whom we have spent eight or nine hours of pleasure or happiness, what also establishes the irresistible antipathy that is that deep in the heart we know that those creatures have different conscience with respect to us. Hence we know them not having ever setting our eyes on them. It is this that also explains indifference. Since we don't seek to make friends when we know that we have others that love us and wish us well. In one word, the sleep influences your lives more than you think. Through sleep, the incarnated spirits are always in contact with the spiritual world, allowing then that the superior spirits, without much repulse, do agree to come to incarnate in your environment. God wanted that during contact with vices, they should reinforce their virtues in the source of goodness, so as not to fail, as they come to instruct others. Sleep is the door that God opened to them to meet their friends from heaven. It is the break after the work, waiting for the great liberation, the final liberation, that should reintegrate them back to the real world. A dream is the memory of what your spirit saw during the sleep. Notice, however, that you do not always dream since you do not always remember some of what you have seen or everything that you have seen. It is not your soul in its full detachments. Often it is not nothing more than the memory of the perturbation that follows our departure or arrival, added to the memory of what you have done or what worries you during the waking state. Without that, how can we explain those absurd dreams of the scholars as well as of the simplest person? The evil spirits also use dream to format the, the weak and, and other souls. As a matter of fact, you will soon see the development of a new kind of dream. It is as old as one you know, but ignored by you. It is the dream of Joan of Arc, of Jacob, of the Jewish prophets, and of some Indian foretellers. Such a dream represents the memory of the soul entirely separated from the body. The memory of that second life that I was telling you about some time ago. For the dreams that you retain, the memory, try to distinguish well between those two kinds. As without it, you shall fall into contradictions and cause dismal mistakes to your faith. That was the end of his quote. At the end of the spirit's communication, we are being told that some dreams can hold valuable information for us. It is our responsibility to separate the important and relevant dreams from the vast majority of nonsense dreams that we all have. I hope this helps. I have more information about dreams in my books, in my writings, on my on my blog, nwspiritism.com. I recommend that you read about 
uh, Spiritism, get my book, Spiritism 101, The Third Revelation. It will give you an introduction to Spiritism, how we are all immortal souls, and our time on Earth is really meant for learning. We are on a campus of Earth. To learn about how you reincarnate, how you come to your body, read my book, The Case for Reincarnation. Lastly, read my book, Explore Your Destiny, Your Path to Perfection. It will tell you why you are on Earth, what heaven is like, what the other regions are like, and will give you a good idea of where we came from, where we are now, and where we shall return. God bless.